Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, the first lesson is from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, They were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you propose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. 
and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them to everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit For the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, 
and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by one spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophesy, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We still have time for our children's sermon. I know there aren't a lot of people, but anyone is welcome to come forward. All right. Hopefully, I won't drop anything. I have all this stuff. That's okay. Once your brother was the only one. You weren't here, though. All right. Since. Aw, they kind of match, too. Welcome. Well, since Sunday school uh, ended last week, except for the confirmation kids, which I made come today, um, I know you didn't read this in Sunday school this morning, so I thought we'd read from the, the story Bible about the Holy Spirit. What's that? She was at confirmation class helping with her dad, too. So she did go to Sunday school, but we didn't read this, and here we're working on a special project. So now we'll take time to read about the Holy Spirit. Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house. Everyone's hair lifted up, and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other. It looked like a disciple had a flame, a fire touching him, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come, just as Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages, languages they've never learned. Stranger yet, they could understand each other. Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus had taught them. He told them how Jesus died and lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's spirit guiding us, Peter said. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's spirit. This was the very beginning of the Christian church. So those are those uh, little flames, but nobody got burnt. Oh, do we get, um, there might be cookies next week. Yes, because of confirmation. But I, it's kind of, it's a surprise. Um, I don't have any cookies. Maybe Mr. Bill brought something for afterwards. So, <laughs> Okay, who, who here has ridden a horse before? You can answer if you're out there. You, have you seen a horse in person ever? In a picture? Okay. Well, I went horseback riding yesterday with my cousin. I lost money on a horse. You lost money on a horse. <laughs> well, how how tall are horses usually? Like, I'm guessing eight feet. Eight feet? That's a pretty good... Any experts want to say... Eight feet's a pretty good... Kind of get, I mean, it depends what you're measuring, if the top of their head or their their back. But when I, what's that, their forehead? Eight feet's a big horse, but that's possible. Clydesdale, maybe? Those are in commercials, like for the Super Bowl. Six feet and a little horse, 
Like, like a pony. Five. There's ponies too. Yeah. yeah, that you see. Uh, yeah, maybe five feet for a pony. Perfect. Um, a lot bigger than us, though. Yeah. Does anybody know how much horses weigh? I don't. This is just. Um, what do you think? Guess. Fifty-eight pounds. Fifty-eight pounds. Well, I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh, but um, I weigh more than 58 pounds, and horses weigh a lot more than me. What do horses weigh? Like a ton? <laughs> 800 to 1,200. Yeah, so they weigh a lot, and you have to, you know, you have to know how to to be around them. Lisa's around horses a lot. She helps out with, she helps uh, kids ride horses. So too. Used to. Okay. Anyway, she's our resident expert, I guess, in the room. <laughs> Maybe some others. But I was riding yesterday with my cousin, and the horse they gave me had a name. Um, there was Odie, which was the the guide horse, and then my cousin rode um, Happy, and my horse was named Safe. Like when you're when you feel safe. And um, after all, I just told you about horses, how much they weigh. Well, after all, we kind of just put together. They're really big. They weigh a lot. They're a little bit unpredictable. Sometimes you can't trust, you can't count on them always, right? Um, You think that's a good name for a horse? You think? Well, I think it was for this one because he was very gentle. And so... um, Maybe they gave him, maybe I looked nervous. I don't know. I've been horseback riding before with, with the same group, but, um, maybe they give them to people when they're a little bit scared. And they're like, don't worry, this horse's name is safe. But at the same time, you still have to be careful because it's a horse. You still have to respect the horse. And, um, there was one moment we were in the Metro Park and there was one moment when some ducks came into land. And the horses went, ooh, I got scared by these ducks landing on the water because they didn't know what it was. But it was okay. But you still, you know, you still, there's a little bit of danger involved. You just have to be careful and have a good guide and everything. Well, I wonder if that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. Um, The Holy Spirit is, well, gosh, hard to explain, I think. But we have these tongues of fire, or it looks like fire, which fire is not safe. Right? Uh, we have to be careful with fire. Fire is a really good thing, though, um, too, in t- at times. But there's this fire, but it's a kind of a safe fire in some ways. And I think that's like the Holy Spirit, because when if you say to, to God or the Holy Spirit, say, God, what do you want me to do? Or, Spirit, what do you think I should be doing? And you kind of feel like, hey, I'm supposed to talk to a new kid at school and maybe I'm nervous um, or maybe I'm supposed to for some of the for some of us are older um, maybe I'm supposed to reach out to somebody I don't know or I see somebody um, that's maybe they're homeless or something like that um, maybe I'm supposed to go talk to them and see what I can do um, that can be scarier because we don't know that person are there any other kind of scary things that God would ask you to do? You can answer if you'd like. You can answer if you'd like to. You don't know. That's okay. There's a lot of things. Well, I think, I think I'm think i asking everybody here and the people that are kind of on a break for this Sunday. <laughs> but the whole church, I'm asking them to do things that don't always feel safe. Maybe they're not. Um, how we've always done things, or maybe there are new things. And we've done some new things this year. Like we decorated that cross for Easter, and a lot of people said, I didn't, I didn't know how that was going to work out, but it, it was real pretty. Thank you. Well, you thank you, because you all did it. All right. We're going we're gonna to keep talking about the Holy Spirit in the sermon, so. And you can keep keep thinking about it um that i do not have anything for you today (laughs) there's some yes there's gifts of the spirit okay we're gonna pray dear god 
you repeat after me too if you're not if you're not yeah, dear, dear God. God thank you for sending the Holy Spirit thank you for sending the Holy Spirit thank you for Jesus thank you for Jesus help us to feel safe help us to feel safe help us to know you are with us help us to know you are with us amen Thank you all for coming up. Thank you. Thanks, Hagel. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening that day, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. But if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. I wasn't sure where that children's sermon was going to go, but I and I have. um, I was looking for my Zippo lighter. I didn't want to just leave that laying around. Although it's out of fuel, so I I can't do much with it. Uh, But I still have this nice angel on it. I want you to um, do something for me, if you can, if you feel safe doing this. But I want you to close your eyes just for a moment, if you're able. And I want you to imagine that it's the day after Pentecost. And I don't mean tomorrow, but the day after that first Pentecost. And you were there to witness everything that God did on that remarkable day. And I want you to imagine yourself as one of those early followers of Jesus. I wonder how you would feel, what emotions would be going through your head. What do you need to feel reassured? Do you have any idea what this Holy Spirit is? what the Holy Spirit is capable of and how it will show up in your life and in the church. What could God tell you to reassure you that the Spirit is there as your guide? I wonder if you would feel more anxious or more confident after this whole experience. You can open your eyes if you had them closed. Or I suppose if you want to, you can keep them closed. It will, it will not bother me. Uh, it won't bother me if you fall asleep or anything either. <laughs> um, if having them closed made you feel tired and you know the person next to you, you could maybe le- lean your head on their shoulder. Um, during seminary, we had worship almost every every morning between classes. 
And sometimes I was tired after uh, an eight in the morning class or even if I was just arriving at 10, 10, 15 for worship. I was sometimes tired. And sometimes I had the urge to just lay down in the pew or wherever. And, well, the, I couldn't really do that because um, not only did I have to get good grades and go through committees, the professors had to sign off on me before I graduated and everything to the bishop. So I thought I didn't really want to be that one that would just kind of lay down during the service. So I never did. But you, but you all can do, do that if you want. <sighs> Today we hear of the Spirit being made known at Pentecost. And in these verses from the book of Acts, we get an account of God sending God's Spirit. It's quite an amazing and dramatic event. It begins with the the disciples and everyone gathered, and there's wind and fire, and it's not subtle at all. What did that children's Bible say? I forget the exact phrase, but um, it made their hair stand up, but it said it differently. All their hair stood up. Kind of like this, probably. Just like that. Maybe even on their arms and legs. (laughs) Maybe it was the goosebumps that it was trying to tell you. They felt something there, and it felt like the goosebumps. But I like that version of it. And Acts, we hear it's, it's violent, it's powerful, it's a force not to be reckoned with. It doesn't feel very safe. And the wind filled the entire house. And there was no, no place in that house where you, you could escape from the Spirit. It filled every crack and, and crevice. In fact, it even filled the people gathered. And you could see it by those flames being represented on them. The people were, were filled with the Holy Spirit. And these, this Holy Spirit wasn't just for the disciples or those in the in crowd. It was for everyone. No one could escape its presence. And it had shown up during Pentecost, which means people had had come from all over, and they had these different languages. There were friends and neighbors and strangers gathered together for the celebration, but also people from different communities, different tribes, countries, and even different religions. Regions is what I meant to say. There were people that could converse freely with each each other, and there were those who couldn't communicate because there was a language barrier. But then the Spirit showed up. And it, it descended on each person gathered that day. And no one was left out from experiencing the Spirit. And so as the Spirit filled them, they could talk in these other languages, and they could understand it. And they could hear the good news of God that Peter started to describe to them. And their response was that they were amazed and astonished. But they were also disoriented and confused. Maybe they were, some of them were annoyed or angry because that was not how they planned their little celebration to go. They definitely probably had an immediately difficult time to see this is an amazing and astonishing act of God. Yet, more confusion or, or other emotions at that time. And yet, that's what Peter proclaims is happening. Peter declares that God is responsible. That Joel's prophecy is being fulfilled. And this is God's, God's vision being proclaimed even wider and more inclusive than when Joel first spoke it. It's reaching everyone God is crossing boundaries. God is rising above those things that might separate. God's bringing people together, regardless of age or sex or gender or education, occupation. 
ability and, and any of the ways in which human beings attempt to separate themselves and create systems of status and power and privilege. This is God sending God's spirit for all to see, for all to experience. This spirit and its all-inclusive nature shows up and uses a variety of languages to share the good news. And this, friends, is where the challenge resides. In this story, we get the model for how God brings a diverse creation together. Language doesn't separate them. Heritage doesn't separate them. Country of origin doesn't separate them. God, through the Spirit, brings all these people together. And within this togetherness, the good news is made known in a way that all of the people gathered could hear and relate and comprehend this act of God. This good news of grace, of love, inclusion for all people, this good news of God come to earth, this good news that Jesus had left, but the Spirit would remain. That the Spirit would live inside each and every one of us. And so I wonder how we speak that good news today. In this time and place. So that people in this church, and this community, and even beyond can relate. How do we speak to people who have experiences that are different than us? How do we speak to to people who don't see value in the church as it is today? Or see some hypocrisy and sin and injustice within the church? How do we speak to people who don't see a need for church at all? How do we speak to people who don't know who God is or don't really care to find out? Sometimes it's in the same ways that we've been speaking to people for ages, by living our lives differently, by living out the values of things like forgiveness and grace and peace. Sometimes it's in seeing God in other people, seeing the gifts in other people, and recognizing and naming them for others. Sometimes it's being open to the ways the Spirit shows up and open to things like change. The ways the Spirit comes and and changes things and leaves nothing the same as it was. And realizing that that can be a good thing. Because when the Spirit shows up, the walls of division or disagreement, ways we separate ourselves can really crumble down. This very unsettling and all-encompassing, uncomfortable experience of the Spirit in Acts is what started the early church. And so today, on a day that we name Pentecost... We remember the Spirit and thank God for the Spirit in our lives, the Spirit that challenges and provokes, that pushes, and is powerful. It's a force not to be reckoned with. When it shows up, it is a gift. When when the Spirit shows up, God shows up and breaks down what we already know and constructs, constructs an even bigger a more beautiful way for moving forward. God always has a bigger vision for us than we can understand. God is always working toward a more life-giving reality than we can begin to imagine. And God's Spirit is always at work around the world, even when sometimes it's hard for us to see it. I believe God isn't done yet with any of us, with this church, with these wonderful people, this community. Pentecost was just the beginning. And I think we can continue to have beginnings. Every time we celebrate Pentecost, 
Every time we're called to do something new in this place. I wonder if when you closed your eyes at the beginning, if you thought about the present church at all. We may have many of the same challenges or hopes or fears or emotions when we think about what the church might look like today. God might challenge us to use a different language. God might ask us to do things we would, not ra- we would rather not do. God might make us uncomfortable or disrupt what we thought we were supposed to be doing. The Holy Spirit can be a little bit scary. But I now have this new image for the Spirit that I didn't have until yesterday. This image of being safe. This horse, safe. Even in the midst of what we perceive as challenges, God is still at work. God's Spirit not only challenges us, but gives us courage and empowers us to follow where God takes us. And so that is our good news for today. That we may be amazed and astonished, feel safe and empowered by the God who shows up for, the, for us, and the God who is with us wherever we may go. Amen.
Let us together confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, down from heaven, was carnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, into heaven, and is seated at the right hand again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, Equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of the peace with someone around you. Let us pray. 
Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. I abundant. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word, this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Take us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Peace, serve the risen one.